Welcome. The following technical support video will show you the software steps needed to do the print cut application using the Roland Cut Studio software and dark transfer paper. The graphic that I have up here is a picture of a snowboarder from Great Dane Graphics. If you'll notice, I chose this graphic specifically since we're putting on a black colored shirt to show how we're going to do an offset and inset because of the color of the cap, the gloves, the sleeves, and the boots are black. And if we're going to put it onto a black colored shirt, it's going to look something like this. It's very hard to see the caps and the things. It doesn't really pop out. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an offset and an inset that will give us a white border from the transfer paper to make all that pop out and look like that. So what we're going to start off by doing is going into our Rolling Cut Studio software. Let's go up to the top, click on File, and go down to Print Cut. What that will do is it ends up putting our three registration dots down onto our cutting palette. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the Import button, click on Import, and we're going to find our snowboarder graphic. We're going to drop in. Now obviously it comes in a little bit bigger. You have two choices. I like to just click on the graphic, right click, and go down to Properties or the properties window also shows up in the top right corner as well. So what we'll do is we'll go to the properties, we'll open up the properties window, and we're going to change our width and our height to fit in. And I already have the page set up at 8.5 by 11, so what I'll do is I'll make it so my graphic fits just on the inside. If you have to keep the access spec button checked, it'll automatically keep them in the proper proportion. We'll go ahead and hit OK. Now my graph is a little bit higher. I can click and drag it, drag it and move it around. Or I can just come over to the top and click Move. And it'll move it to the bottom corner. Now you'll notice it's still a little bit higher than what I want it to be. So I'll come over, right click, Properties. And we're going to change this just to 6. Now it's a little bit smaller and our graphic fits where we want. Now what we need to do is create our cut lines. Now if, if we're doing this on a light transfer paper, you're going to want to go over and mirror your object by coming down here and clicking on mirror because light transfer paper we mirror it but dark transfer paper we don't and that's what we're doing this time so we're not going to mirror it you definitely do not want to try and mirror your print when using the multi-rip side of it because it'll actually mirror your registration marks so what happens is it'll take this top dot and put it over here and the optical eye on the rolling cutter will not be able to find it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our cut lines. We're simply going to click on the graphic, go up to object, and we're going to come down the image outline. In the image outline, you'll have a little preview window. Anything that's in here that's white, it's going to create a cut line for it. So what we can do is we can take the slider and we can slide it, going in one direction or not. You slide it to the left, it's going to create more cut lines, which is something we don't want to do in this case. We slide it all the way to the right, and you'll notice if you look at the edges, it'll get really jaggedy over here. And we don't want that to happen either, so we're just going to slide it to the point where we think it gives us the best crisp lines, but the least amount of white area. We'll go over and click on Extract Contour Lines. Now all these little blue lines in here are all going to be our cut lines. We want the outside cut line. We want this inside here cut line, but we don't want any of these other things. So what we're going to do is show you how to go ahead and remove those cut lines. Currently, all of these cut lines are combined together as one. What we're going to do to correct that is come up here, go down, and we're going to click on Break Polyline. It's now broken them off. We'll click outside the graphic. You notice all of our cut lines that were blue now turn to black. What we're going to do is we're going to try and click outside, left click down, hold it over until we can cover all of the graphics that are the lines we want deleted. Now I'm going to show you this specifically where when you do that it's going to highlight all of these down here but it also highlights the center portion here. Something we don't want it to do. So what we'll do is we'll click off that. I'm going to break this into two parts. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to highlight this. As long as you don't highlight all of the nodes once you break the polyline, it won't delete them. So we're just going to do the top path. We'll hit delete. Notice it has deleted all of these but it has not deleted the top line. We're going to do the same thing when you come down here. Left click down, drag over. We're going to highlight the ones we want to delete. Hit delete. Now we have our outside cut line and we have our inside cut line. Now what we need to do is create basically the white border that goes around it. So what we'll do to first start off is we'll click on the outside cut line. 
We'll go up to the top, go object, click on offset. We're going to give this a 0 0.05 outside cut and go ahead and hit OK. Now you'll notice that there are two lines showing up right there. I'm going to click on the inside one and I'm going to delete it. So now we have a little bit of a white border that goes around it. We need to do the same thing for the inside one, but in this case, when we go to do offset, we're actually going to do it on the inside of it. So we'll do it the same amount, so it has the same amount of white border around it. Again, come back over here, click on the outside one, and hit delete. Now that we have all of our cut lines done and everything, now we're ready to print. We'll go File, go down to Print, and then choose the multi Stylish Pro 4800. Click on the Properties, go down to Advance. Now see we'll set up our page size, which in this case we're doing letter. We can scroll down. We're going to be using the multi-ink, or if you're going to use it with uh, chromoblast ink and a different type of paper, you can do that as well. You'll choose one of our transfer papers that we have listed down here to choose from. In this case, we're just going to go with transfer graphics. You can also choose your RGB source profile if that's what you're working in. Uh, once you have all that, you're good to go. Go ahead and hit file. OK. OK and print. Now what I'll do is I'll bring out the information in the RIP and I want you to see that it will not print these lines going around the graphic. It only prints the actual graphic and our registration dots. Once we have that set up, now what we'll do is we'll go back into our Cut Studio software and we'll go up to the top where it says Cutting. Click on Cutting and we're going to send it to the Roland GX24 once we have it properly loaded into the cutter. That's all it takes to do print cut when doing dark transfer and putting a stroke around the outside of it, giving us a little white border. If you have more questions, feel free to call your distributor. Thank you, and have a great day.